Thank you for joining us today. Today is Easter Sunday. This is Resurrection Sunday. He is risen. We serve a risen Savior. And I praise God for that because I have the victory. There is an empty tomb. And I celebrate that today. He is risen. And because He lives, I can face tomorrow. Because He lives, I can face today. I'm so thankful for this. We're going to go to the Lord in prayer. But first of all, I want to say you thank you so much for joining us. This is Pastor Adam Herring, Capital City Church of God. I want to remind you of our ways to give. First of all, you can go to CapitalCityCOG.com and do your online giving there. Secondly, we have text to give. You can text 919-849-5333. And also you can mail in your donations and contributions to the physical address, which is 1500 Headingham Boulevard, Raleigh, North Carolina, 27604. Let's go to the Lord in prayer right where you are. I want you to enjoy this service. I want us to worship God, to magnify Him, and for God to have His way. God to bless you, God to cover you and to wrap you and just give you what you need here today. I know that God can do that. Let us pray together. Heavenly Father, we come before you in Jesus' name. We ask, God, that you just do a wonderful thing in the hearts and the lives of all those that hear and receive this message today. I praise you. I thank you, God, for your grace. I thank you, Lord, for your salvation. God, that we are saved. We're, we're in the hollow of your hand. I thank you, God, for sending your son to die for us on the cross. Thank you, God, for resurrecting him out of that tomb. And now he's on the right hand of the Father making intercession for us. For that, I praise you. I worship you, God. Bless us today, God. Give us what we need. We need your help. I need your help. This world, our nation, needs your help. Save our world. Save our nation. God, I pray for those in leadership that you'd give them the wisdom, the direction that they need. Our president, our vice president, the Senate, the Congress, our mayors, our governors, those who are struggling with this, those who are sick, those who are working on the front lines, those in the hospital. God, you died for us. You died so we can be your people. And I pray that you give us exactly what we need today. Give us a tailor-made blessing. In Jesus Christ's holy name, we pray. He is risen. Thank you, Jesus. He is risen. Worship with us today as we go to the Lord in worship.
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. What a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful name it is. How excellent is thy name in all the earth. Praise God. Hallelujah. We serve a risen Savior today. Hallelujah. That's why I live today. That's why I live. I want to preach to you today out of God's word. And I want, to, I want you to look at one of the most powerful, one of the most mighty, one of the strongest scriptures there is in the entire Bible. This is a touchstone scripture. If you have your Bible, please turn with me to Matthew chapter 28, one verse of scripture. Matthew 28, verse number 6. And the scripture here, this is, this is what my faith relies on. This is what my faith hinges on, is this scripture right here. Matthew 28, verse 6, the Bible says, He is not here, for he is risen as he said. There is power in that scripture. Jesus said, you can put me on a cross, you can put me in a tomb, but on the third day I will rise up out of that tomb. And that's exactly what he did. I'll read it again, Matthew 28, verse number 6. He is not here, for he is risen, as he said. Did you know that you can, you can have Easter? It's no, it's no secret that I'm preaching to empty pews. This is an empty building. This is an empty church this morning. All across America on Easter Sunday morning, there are empty churches. But you can have church with an empty building. You can have church with an empty Sunday school classroom. You can have church with an empty choir loft. But you cannot have Easter without an empty tomb. It is impossible to have Resurrection Sunday without an empty tomb. Jesus Christ got up out of that tomb victorious over death, hell, and the grave. And he is on the right hand of the Father making intercession for you and me. Praise God for that. This morning I want to preach to you on this thought here. Empty Easter. An empty Easter. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, I ask you that you'd help me to preach. I pray that this word would go out. and It would go out with strength. It would go out with power. It would go out with anointing. God, cover our congregation right where they are. Touch their hearts, touch their minds, strengthen them and give them exactly what they need. I need you today, God. My heart needs you. And I pray that you do your work, do your will. In that mighty name, that victorious name, that wonderful name of Jesus, I pray and ask, amen. Amen, amen. Thank you. Thank you for your attendance here today to the word of God. I, this week, set out what I, like I normally do on Easter week or Holy Week as some people call it I set out to read one of the Gospels and the Gospel that I chose as my devotion for this week was the Gospel of St. John and I started reading and I got to about the 8th chapter and I found out one thing about the mission and the goal of Jesus Christ is that his mission, his goal was to make people full not to leave them empty. Every person that Jesus interacted with, every person that he touched, every person that he talked to, they left his presence not empty, but they left him full, full of blessings. Some people came to him dead, but they left him full of life. Some people came to him empty, completely empty, but left his presence full with joy and hope and peace and the great things that God gives. You know, in Philippians chapter 2, this verse that I'm going to tell you sums up the mission of Jesus Christ in a wonderful way. The fact that he came, he emptied out himself so that me, so that you, we could become full. The Bible says in Philippians 2 and 5, it says, Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, and took upon him the form of a servant, and was made in the likeness of man. And being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself, and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Wherefore God also hath highly exalted him, and given him a name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow and every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is 
Lord to the glory of God the Father. You know what that scripture really means? This is what it means. It means that God sent his son to this world. He went from heaven to earth. He went from the earth to the cross. He went from the cross to the grave. And he came up out of the grave, out of the tomb. And there's an empty tomb today. And he went to the sky to be with God. And now he is there. And we can call upon him at any time. That is what Jesus did for you. That's what Jesus did for me. And because he did all that, I don't have to live a life that's empty. I can live a life that's full of blessings, full of anointing, full of strength, full of the fruit of the Spirit, full of the Holy Ghost. The Bible says that the fruit of the Spirit is love and joy and peace and goodness and gentleness and meekness and temperance. Against such there's no law, there's no limit. And Jesus Christ came to give that to you, to fill you up. Now... When I began reading in John, one of the first things I noticed about God, about Jesus touching people, was Nicodemus. He came to Nicodemus, or Nicodemus actually came to Jesus by night, and Nicodemus had one question. He says, how can I be born again? In other words, how can I have what you have? And Jesus looked at him at night and told him, you're supposed to be a master of the law. How come you don't understand these things? See what Nicodemus had, he had empty understanding. Maybe today your mind is empty, your heart is empty, your life is empty, and you just can't understand how that Jesus would die for you. That's the same situation that Nicodemus was in. But Jesus looked at Nicodemus right in the eye. And John 3.16 is the hallmark of our salvation. It says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth on him should not perish, but have everlasting life. See, there's some things in life that I don't understand. But I sure do have some faith. And I sure do put my trust in it. God's not asking you to understand everything that's out there, but he's asking you to put your faith in God and lean on him. I get in my car. I have faith and I have trust in my car that it'll get me down the road and I can drive 70 miles an hour. I trust in that vehicle. I don't understand everything there is to know about that vehicle. I can't take it apart and put it back together. My understanding is limited. I don't have all the understanding there is to to know all about a jet airplane, but I'll board a jet airplane. I'll let it take me from point A to point B, 30,000 feet up in the air. I'll trust in that airplane. I'll trust in that jet engine. But God is asking us and he's telling us just like Nicodemus. Nicodemus had an empty understanding. But your understanding may be empty. You may not even consider or understand or comprehend just what God has done for you. But you don't have to understand it. All God is saying is all you got to do is believe. Have faith in God. And God can save you. God can change you. And God can quicken you and make you alive again. See, we see that Jesus then left Nicodemus. And he came to a nobleman of Capernaum. He came to Capernaum, and there in Capernaum, he found a noble man. And this man rushed up to Jesus and said, Jesus, my son, he's at home. He's dying. I don't know what to do. You see what this man had? He had an empty heart. His heart was broken because his son was laying at home, and his son was dying dying have you ever been there when you couldn't do anything to help your children maybe they were sick or in the hospital it'll break your heart it'll rip the heart right out of you knowing that you can't do anything so this man went to Jesus said can you touch my child can you heal my child and Jesus looked at him and he said right now your child will live that's what Jesus can do you may have a biological problem you might have a health problem you may have turned to every doctor there is with no answer but you can turn to Jesus your health situation may be out of control you may have a biological impossibility here today so did that man but he gave it to Jesus he had faith in God and God restored his son I remember down at the hospital local hospital here where we are in Raleigh I heard a story about a chaplain. He walked into a room. The father was a Spanish man, spoke Spanish, could speak hardly any English. He walked into the room, the chaplain did, and the father was sitting there in the corner crying. His little baby just was born. His pulse ox was down to two, very low oxygen level. 
and the, the chaplain walked in, went to the, to the father. The father, with tears in his eyes, looked at that chaplain, and he said, do you think, with broken English, he said, do you think that my son can live? Do you think that God can touch my son? Do you think that Jesus could heal my baby? And that chaplain looked at that man, that father, and he said, I absolutely believe that God can heal your child. And that father with tears running down his face, he knelt down, he got on the floor, and he cried out to Jesus the loudest he could in Spanish. And the chaplain saw that and he said, well, I might as well pray too. So he got down on his knees and he prayed right there in the hospital room, tears flooding down his face. The father was praying in Spanish. The, the chaplain was praying in English, but it wasn't no time, about 30 minutes. They looked over at the machine and they saw that that baby's oxygen level was going up and up and up. And about 45 minutes later, the chaplain walked out. He didn't know if God saved that child, but he knew one thing, that prayer was making all the difference. See, your heart may be empty today. You might have been suffering for for things for a long time. You may have been going through a lot of health problems, but I know that God can help you if you give it to God. Pour it out to the Lord. That's what he wants to do. He doesn't want to leave you empty handed he doesn't want to leave you with a broken heart he doesn't want to leave you the same way the world left you but he wants to leave you changed better to give you abundant life and a life that's overflowing the next thing we see is that Jesus goes to in the gospel of John he goes out in the field and there are 5,000 people out there and they were getting hungry they had empty wallets they had empty stomachs and they had empty baskets, three things that were empty there. And the disciple says, these people are getting hungry. What are we going to do? And Jesus said, if that little lad over there that's got two fish and he's got five barley loaves, if he can give me what, I, what he's got, then I can transform it and I can feed this whole multitude. So that little boy, the Bible calls him a little lad, he had two little fish and five barley loaves and gave it to Jesus. And the Bible says that he broke the bread, he blessed the bread, and he distributed it all. And 5,000 people, after Jesus got in the middle of it, there was no more empty stomachs. And there was overflowing baskets with 12 baskets full, overflowing with fragments. Now this is a tangible thing that Jesus did. Maybe in the midst of all this pandemic and this virus that's going on, you've been looking at your your assets. You've been looking at things that are tangible. Maybe you've been checking in on your retirement, your 401k, and one day it looks good, the next day it looks like there's nothing there. I want to let you know that you don't have anything anyways if it wasn't for God. The Bible says that Jesus is the vine and we are the branches and without him we are nothing. There's a lot of things in this life that we wouldn't have if it wasn't for Jesus. Take love for example. The Bible says that God is love. You can't have real love in your life if it wasn't for God. The Bible says though I speak with the tongue of men and angels and have not love I am become as a sounding brass and a tinkling cymbal and though I have the gift of prophecy and understand all mysteries and all knowledge and I have all faith that I can move mountains but I don't have love the Bible says that I am nothing maybe today you've got an empty bank account maybe you've got an empty wallet maybe you've got an empty stomach and you you're looking around and you're thinking how am I going to make ends meet but what you need to do is do just like that little boy did take what little bit you've got and give it to God put it in God's hands transfer it into the hands of the Lord and you'll be so surprised what God can do the Bible says in Jeremiah 33 and 3 it says call unto me and I will show you great and mighty things Things that you know not of praise God right where you are I know if I had people in here this morning they would say amen and I know you would too so why don't you say amen right where you are the next thing we see Jesus in the gospel pouring out himself pouring out himself he goes to a man by the pool of Bethesda this man by the pool of Bethesda for 38 years he was crippled he lay in there, and the tradition says whenever an angel came by and stirred up the water, that you were supposed to get in that water, and then you'd be healed. But Jesus walked by. This man been laying by this pool for 38 years. And Jesus said, do you want to be healed? And the man where he was laying down, he looked up at Jesus, and he said, I don't have anybody. I don't have no friends. I don't have no family. I don't have nobody. I have nothing. And whenever the water is troubled... 
I'm all by myself. I'm lonely. And somebody else gets in that water before I can. So I've been laying here for 38 years with nothing. What this man represents is an empty future. You know, he's already laid there for 38 years. He could have laid there for another 40 years. And he would have stayed in the same condition because he had an empty future. But one day the Savior, our risen Savior, my master, my King Jesus came by, saw him where he was. And he looked at him and he said, take up your bed and walk. And the man leaped up and he jumped for joy and he got out of that place because of one word of Jesus Christ. You might not have family. You might be like this man. You may not have any friends. You might be all alone. You might be watching this video right in your home all by yourself. And who knows what the devil has spoken to you. The enemy tells us all the time, you don't have anybody. Nobody's on your side. Nobody's fighting for you. Nobody's with you. But that's a lie from the devil. And what you need to tell the devil to do is to be quiet because you've got a Savior. His name is Jesus. He came up out of that empty tomb and he wants to fill your life. And every time the devil whispers in your ear and tells you that you don't have anything at all, you let him know that Jesus told me in his word that he will be with me always, even even until the end of the world he told me that he was Emmanuel God with us now you might be sitting where you are you might feel all alone you can call out to Jesus you can look up to Jesus and Jesus can tell you why don't you just rise up and walk God can do that for you today but you have to look up to him you've got to call up to him the next place we see Jesus going in his travels in the gospel of John there's a woman caught in adultery in the middle of adultery and they brought this woman to Jesus and this woman was there on the ground. There was Pharisees surrounding her. These people had big stones in their hand and they were going to stone her. So what did Jesus do? He got down and he wrote something in the sand. And then he stood up and he said, all of you standing around that's got these stones, you can throw the stone. But tell me, if you've without sin, if you're without sin, you can be the one that casts the first stone. And the Bible says that these people were pricked in their hearts. Their hearts, their conscience was convicted. And they dropped their stones and they walked away. And Jesus went there and he wrote something else on the ground. And he rose to his feet again. And he spoke to this woman, saw this woman there all by herself. says, where are your accusers at? Where are the people who condemned you? And she says, I don't know. I guess they've left. And Jesus said, I don't condemn you either. Go and sin no more. And that was the end of that episode with that woman. See, this woman represents a person who is not empty, but she is full of sin, full of wickedness. And Jesus said to this woman, why don't you just get up, go and sin no more? Maybe you in your life, you are full of sin. You know you are. You're full of wickedness you're tired of the life that you're living you're tired of doing the things that you've been doing you, you're, you're sick of it you're ready to get a new life you're tired of living the life that you've always lived and you think that maybe tomorrow will be better maybe next week will be better maybe next year will be better but it'll never be better as long as you put off God and as long as you push Jesus on the back burner it'll never be better as long as you keep Jesus in that tomb but if you recognize that Jesus came up out of the tomb and he didn't just do it for anybody, he did it for you. If you recognize that that's what Jesus has done, you can get up and do exactly what the Lord is calling you to do. Get up and sin no more. Pour out your sin and while you're empty, ask God to fill you up with a new life. You can nail your sins to the cross. You can walk away from the cross a new man, a new woman in Christ Jesus. Jesus can save you. Jesus can wash you. Jesus can mend you. You might be carrying heavy burdens today. You might be thinking, what am I going to do with my life? I thought my life would have been different. But God can change your life. Jesus can make you a new person. The Bible says in Isaiah 1 and 18, Come now and let us reason together, saith the Lord. Though your sins are as scarlet, they shall be white as snow. Though they are red like crimson, they shall be like wool. See, Jesus can wash you. He can cleanse you. 
He can make you a new man. He can make you a new woman in Christ Jesus. The Bible says, it says, be not conformed to the world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Jesus can transform your life. He can make you a new person. One thing I want to tell you here today is this. Jesus not only fills you up, but he fills you up so you can be poured out as well. He doesn't just fill you up with love so you can be loveless. He doesn't just fill you up with grace so you can live a life that's graceless. He doesn't fill you up with mercy so you can be merciless. But he fills you up so you can let it overflow. So you can let the presence and power of God flow out to somebody else. You might be empty here today. You might be empty on this resurrection Sunday morning listening to this message. But I can tell you God can fill you up. God can bless you in ways beyond your wildest imagination. God can help you and he can do things in your life that you never thought could happen before. That's the power. That's the presence of God. In the Old Testament, the Bible talks about what's called a drink offering. You first see it in Genesis chapter 35. The Bible tells us that there's a man named Jacob... Jacob was a supplanter. Jacob was a cheater. But God got in his life and God changed his life. God changed his heart. God even changed his name. Changed his name from Jacob to Israel. And whenever this happened, Genesis 35, the Bible says that Israel, his new name, he took a bottle of oil. And he said, I'm going to give this to the Lord as a drink offering. And what he did, he filled up that bottle full of oil, but then he poured it out. And he said, God, this is for you. We see the same thing in the New Testament with Saul or Paul, like I preached about last week. Paul, he was against Christianity, but God saved him on the Damascus Road. But we see right before his death, he said, I am now ready to be offered up. I live my life. I used to be empty. I used to be nothing. I used to be a hollow shell and a carcass of a man, but God filled me up. But along the way, God filled me up with so many blessings. I've been pouring it out to other people. God filled me with the gospel, but yet I preached the gospel. I poured it out to somebody else. God filled me with salvation, and I showed that salvation to somebody else. And the Bible says that he said, I am now ready to be offered up. My departure is at hand. I fought a good fight. I finished my course. And henceforth is laid up for me a crown of righteousness. You see, God fills you up so that you can be poured out. There was a lady in the Old Testament. Her name was Hannah. She was a prayerful woman, but she was empty. She had an empty dream. I want you to listen to me. She had an empty dream. Maybe you are listening to this. 2020, Easter, resurrection, and you've got Empty dreams. Things in life that you wanted to do. Places you wanted to be. You thought that you would be better by now. You thought that you would be further along by now. You've had a dream all your life, but it hasn't came to fruition yet. Just like Hannah, she had a dream, and her dream was to have a child. That's all she wanted in life, but the Bible tells me that she was barren. She was empty. She had an empty womb. So she went to the temple and she prayed. She said, God, if you give me a child, I will give that child back to you. And Eli, the priest of the temple, saw Hannah praying and she was praying so hard. Her lips were moving, but nothing was coming out of her mouth because she was praying in her heart. And Eli said, what are you doing? And she said this, and I read that this week and it struck my heart. She said, I'm pouring out my soul to God. I'm pouring out my soul to the Lord. And after all that praying, after pouring out her soul to the Lord, God answered that prayer, gave her a son. She became pregnant. And you know what she did? What God filled her up with, she gave it back to the Lord. His name was Samuel. And she gave that child back to the temple, back to the priest. See, some of you... It's no secret. You've got dreams. You've got empty places, voids in your heart. And you could say one thing. This is an empty Easter. This is an empty Easter. But I can tell you right now that if you turn it all over to God, just like Hannah, just like Paul, just like some of these other folks that I preached about in the Bible, God can fill you up. God can take your ashes and turn them around and give you beauty again.
God can change your life. Now, one of the greatest things about this story about Hannah is this. In 1 Samuel chapter number 2, we see that Hannah sings a song. She sings a song to the Lord. She praises God. And in this song, she says something that was very eye-catching to me. She said, the Lord kills and the Lord makes alive. And I read that and we read that and we even hear that. The Lord kills and the Lord makes alive. We think, that's pretty strange. That goes against my beliefs. God doesn't kill. Well, we have to understand something. That God's word is true. And we have to understand one thing about God, that God can kill. God can take care of some things. You know what God kills? God kills sin. God kills problems. God kills diseases. God can handle situations. God can handle hardships. God can handle unemployment. God can even kill viruses. God can kill cancer and God can heal you. And you know what the other part of that scripture says? Not only does God kill, but God raises up again. Maybe in your life right now, you need God just to take care of some stuff. Maybe you've got worry. Maybe you've got anxiety. Maybe you're suffering with depression. Could it be that you, you're dealing with something like this and you just need God to take care of it? To God to wash it away. God, wash it all away. Help me to feel what I need to feel again. God, take care of my emotions, my feelings, my mind, my soul. I need your help. Maybe that's you here today. God can take care of that. And in that place, God can raise something up. God can bring something to life. We serve a God who can resurrect. Maybe that's you here today. If that's you, you need to give your heart to God. I want to pray with you. You can let God save you. You can allow God to be your king. And you don't have to keep Jesus in a tomb. But you can let him come out of that tomb and go into your heart. If you are not saved today, I want to ask you right where you are, in your home, watching on your phone, watching on your laptop, even on your TV, wherever you may be, pray with me. If you want to get saved, if you want Jesus to cleanse you, pray with me. All you have to do, it's easy, it's A, B, C. Accept Jesus, believe in your heart, and commit your way to him. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we come before you right now. Jesus, I know that my life's not been perfect. I know that I've messed up. I know that I've sinned, but I'm tired of sin. I feel like my life is empty, but I accept you, Jesus, into my heart. I admit my sins. And I pray, Lord, that you would wash me, cleanse me. I believe in you, God. I believe in you, Jesus. And for the rest of my days, I will commit my life to you. And I will serve you and be your child. Accept me, Jesus. Wash me, Lord. Forgive me and cleanse me. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. There's a lot of people who are empty. Empty-hearted. Empty dreams. Broken-hearted. Empty hands. They're empty-handed. But God doesn't want to leave you empty-handed. He wants to leave you full. On this Easter Sunday, on this Resurrection Sunday, God can do anything for you. God can bless you and open up the doors. When life has closed the door, when life has slammed the door in your face, God can open up that door. And God can turn it around. And God can bless you in ways that are just unexplainable. Praise God. Praise God. Here in this Easter Sunday morning service, we are going to partake of communion. And I've asked the church if you would gather your communion elements together and gather your family together. This is a very important time. This is a very significant time. And what better time than on Easter Sunday morning to partake of communion with your family. So what do I want to do before we take in communion? I want to read these scriptures. And I want you to grab your bread. I want you to grab your juice here or your cup. I've got my bread and I've got my juice here. I want to read these scriptures. And we're going to pray together and we're going to partake in communion together. The Bible says in Matthew chapter number 26 and verse 26. And as they were eating, Jesus took bread and blessed it and break it and gave it to the disciples and said, take, eat, this is my body. I want you to take that bread, that cracker, that wafer, whatever you have, put it in your hands. And I want us to hold this and think about this and, and pray about this because this represents the body of our Lord and Savior that he gave for us, that he broke for us. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for the body that you gave. Your body was broken on Calvary 
so that our bodies can be healed so that we can live this life in the flesh for your glory for I am crucified with Christ nevertheless I live yet not I but Christ that lives within me and because you gave yourself you can live inside of us I pray God today that you would bless this bless this as we remember you amen you can now partake of the bread here this morning hallelujah 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 thank you my savior thank you my savior thank you jesus the bible says in verse 27 and he took the cup and gave thanks and drank and gave it to them saying drink you all of it for this is my blood of the new testament which is shed for many for the remission of sins. I want you to grab your, your cup, your juice, whatever you have this morning. This symbolizes the blood of Jesus Christ that he shed for us so that we could have eternal life. Not just temporary life, but eternal life. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the blood that you shed for us on Calvary. We remember you. God, that's why we're having these online services, because we remember you. We know that we can't be together right now for, we know these reasons, but Lord, we are connected by the blood of Jesus Christ. We are connected. I pray that somehow supernaturally, God, that the people in our church would feel that warmth, would feel that connection, would feel that fellowship as we commune together. Thank you for your blood that you shed for us. The Bible tells us in Leviticus 17, without the shedding of blood, there's no remission of sins. The life is in the blood, and it's given to us upon the altar for our lives. I thank you for this, Jesus. Amen. You can now partake of the, of the cup here this morning. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. You're a wonderful God. You're a wonderful God. I want to ask you, church, where you are this morning. Take a moment just to pray. Lift your hands. Lift your hearts. Lift your souls to God. Thank you, Jesus. Heavenly Father, I praise you. I worship you, Lord, for this wonderful, wonderful day that you have given us. This is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. Lord, I pray for every person under the sound of my voice that you'd heal them, help them, give them what they need. Give them a miracle this Sunday. Lord, there are sick people in hospitals all over this world. There are people who are living in fear. They're working in fear. They're dealing with things and devils and problems that we can't handle on our own. But I know through the power of our risen Savior, Jesus Christ, the devil has tried to sift this world like wheat. But God, I know that you live to make intercession for us. God, I pray that the blood of our Savior would cover us this morning. Keep us strong. Keep us encouraged. And God, I pray that your will be done in this, in all of this. I praise you. I worship you. I lift it to you. I give it to you, God. And this Easter morning, we won't dwell on what we don't have, but we'll dwell on what we do have in Jesus' name. We are not empty, folks. We are full. We are full of joy unspeakable. That's full of glory. Hallelujah. We're full of peace. The world doesn't understand that peace, but it's peace that Jesus gives. And Jesus says, let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believes also in me. He gives us grace and mercy and all these things. May the Lord bless you and keep you on this wonderful day. May the light of the Lord shine on you. And I pray that the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart would be acceptable in thy sight, my Lord and my Savior, Jesus Christ, my risen King. 
Amen and amen. Have a wonderful Sunday. Have a blessed week. And may the Lord keep you in Jesus' name. God bless. I'll see you soon.